All right, guys, so a uh, little birthday present for me. This was on my doorstep this morning. Got the uh, new rims, the 18 by 10 and a halfs. Um, and we're gonna do a little uh, unboxing here. Hopefully I can do this one-handed. Always wanted to do a video like this. You see them on YouTube all the time, but there we go, look at this. I'm sure a lot of you can already guess which ones I went with, but uh, right, there's a valve stem. I'll give you a second. Write your guesses in the comments below. Ready? Here we go. Woo, look at them things. Oh my goodness. I don't think I've ever been this close to a pair of these. These are the uh, RPF ones. Um, man, they just look good. And geez, they're pretty light. Like I'm just picking this up with one hand. Uh, I want to say that it, it was like 19.06 pounds for an 18 by 10 and a half rim, which is crazy to me. But uh, basically what I'm going to do, since the uh, car is on jack stands and it doesn't have any, any wheels or tires, um, I sold those. So I literally, I listed them and within minutes, a guy wanted to come check them out, came and bought them. Bought them, didn't even haggle, paid full price full asking price um, so I used that money to get two rims I didn't want to get all four because um, I, I want to test fit it first and make sure these are gonna work and see what kind of spacers I'm gonna need on the front um, according to uh, willitfit.com the back is actually gonna have more room with the tire size and the and the rim size because the back was a 17 by 10 and a half and it had uh, 315 35s and now we are a 18 by 10 and a half with 315 30s um, the front is going to be a little different because of the offset um, it's going to it's going to not be as close to the strut which you can see it's kind of rubbing on the strut and on the uh, sway bar there before but um, It'll poke out a lot more, about an inch more, inch and a half more possibly. So I'm going to test fit one of these, see, see what it looks like. All right, guys, so there she is. Definitely going to need a spacer because uh, look at how wide this is. I guess I didn't really realize how wide a ten and a half inch rim was, like, was you know, without a tire on at least. So... Here is the space I've got on the back side. Not much. Um, and I'll turn the, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the steering wheel so you guys can see what we got as far as full lock and everything goes. But there's a better view of the clearance to the strut and brake line. hop in turn the wheel all right guys so this is full lock turning the wheel to the right get under here so you can see we are on the sway bar so let's look up above here still got a little bit of clearance to the strut but it's definitely going to need a spacer because it's it's going to hit the strut and we're already on the sway bar so, how big of a spacer, I guess, is the question. So what I'm gonna do, set the camera down, and I'm going to kind of pull the wheel off a little bit, measure how much I pull it off the, the um, studs, and then uh, see what the spacing is, is, is like and what we're gonna need. All right, real quick before I do that, full lock the other way. So hang on a second. Here. That's how much space we have as a control arm, so it's pretty close all the way around. So I knew I was going to need a spacer, 
Just didn't know how big of one I was gonna need. So I'm thinking it's probably gonna need like a 15 millimeter spacer. Um, but I'm gonna wait until I get the tire mounted to the rim. And then uh, once I get that tire on, then I'm gonna check again and see you know what the spacing is and see if a 15 is going to do it or if i need to go more or if i don't need to go that high um it is the rim is nine millimeters closer to the strut and everything so it was already rubbing that stuff just a little bit it wasn't much um so i think a 15 might do it but like i said i'm going to get the tire mounted on the rim give it another test fit and then see how we are um and then like i said before the the back i'm not worried about it's actually going to be uh, further away from the exhaust and everything and i didn't really have any issues before i mean it was rubbing just a tad there but um wasn't enough to do any kind of damage to the tire or anything so um it's actually going to sit further away from the strut and exhaust and everything so i'm not worried at all about that um, but this I'm, <clears throat> I'm i'm thinking i'm going to do extended studs and then get a 15 millimeter spacer do like three inch studs with a 15 millimeter spacer i think that should do it but um we'll see i'm gonna get the tire mounted and then see how that test fit goes all right guys so oh just lost it hang on we're at 47.8 pounds for the wheel with air and tire now these rims weigh 19.06 pounds just by themselves so um, quite a bit of reduction my other rims were uh, 25 and 27 pounds a piece so I think all together probably losing about 24 ish pounds uh, total so uh, just got this thing mounted balanced um, we're gonna throw it on the car see how it looks all right, so there it is. I think this is gonna look pretty, uh, pretty boss once they're all on there. But I love the, I love the silver. I love the little blue valve stem it came with. It looks awesome. Um, but here is the clearance with the strut. I don't know if you can see that. Um, pretty good amount of clearance. I mean, it's not, not as much as there was, but um, we're still clearing it. So so check out the poke quite a bit more um a good inch maybe two Dad, inches Dad. more Dad. got my sidekick here Dad, Dad. and uh oh i think it i think it'll look pretty aggressive once it's on the ground and they're all all of them are on all right so here's our first issue Dad. that front fender It just touches it, like just barely. So I may, I may trim a little piece Dad. off of that. Sorry. Dad. What? You want to get in it? All right, we'll put you in it. Just give me a minute. I may have to trim a little piece off that front fender right there. Definitely gonna have to. So we'll look underneath here. And as I thought, as I knew already, we're going to be rubbing the strut or the uh, sway bar and the strut is actually okay we're st still clearing right there so just a spacer for the sway bar and looks like some uh, trimming of the uh, front fender but fender linings are okay as it sits i'm going to jack this up and then see how it is then which actually after jacking it up this might clear so let's see all right guys so i tried jacking up the the control arm for the front to try to get the suspension compressed to see how it was going to fit um you know with with as if the car was sitting on the ground which you know you're never going to be able to fully compress it like that but uh the car started lifting up and since i have no wheels on this at all because i sold them um it started getting a little too sideways for my liking since that other side is like the whole car is literally just sitting on jack stands right now i didn't want to make it tilt so much that those jack stands would slip out um 
so I didn't get it fully compressed. But I think what I might have to do here, unfortunately, and but you know, hopefully it all works, is is buy all four, get all four mounted, balanced, and get them all on, then set the car down, and then see what what we need is in terms of spacers and and trimming and stuff like that. This does hit the tire does hit right here, like I just showed you. Um, but I'm thinking once the wheel is up and the suspension is compressed, that's not going to matter because that's going to be on the bottom end of the tire and it won't be rubbing right there. So the only way we're really going to be able to tell is uh, just how you know, I'm going to have to get all four of them, uh, all four tires mounted on here and uh, cross my fingers. You know, I think I'll make it work, though. I don't I don't foresee there being any issues that are going to keep me from being able to keep these wheels and run them. So. Uh, Continue this whenever I get all four in and get them all mounted and balanced. All right, guys. So um, excuse the mess in here. Um, I gotta get some stuff picked up, but um, I don't know. I don't even remember when the last video was. I kind of do videos and then I splice them all together into one video. But I did get the tire mounted on the one rim just to test fit it. I fitted it on there, um, and it does hit the uh, the sway bar. Um, so I obviously knew that was going to happen. I mean, my other one did, um, and it was a smaller width, um, different offset. So what I'm going to do, um, I bought a spacer and I bought some extended wheel studs. Um, so those came in, I've got the Morosco or Moroso, sorry, um, three inch wheel studs for, uh, the left and right side of the front. Um, the rear, it's already got the spacer. It's actually going to have more clearance, like I said before, so I'm not going to have to do anything with that. Um, those will just bolt right up, but um, I got the uh, CJ Pony Parts box here, and I did order my other two rims, so they will be here next week. I started off, I ordered just two of the uh, RPF ones, um, but I... Uh, got the uh, other two on the way had a bit of an issue with I ordered one from one company they said they had them in stock and they actually didn't so I got my money was tied up there but um, I got Ford performance uh, open lug nuts uh, wheel nuts so oh, here I'll set the camera down and show you guys these real quick I'll just uh, cut these open here So I ordered these for all the way around uh, the car. I mean, nothing special. Um, they were cheaper. I didn't want to really spend 120 bucks on lug nuts, so I got these. Because um, I'm going to need the open end for the extended wheel studs. Um, so I got, uh, what, 20 of those, um, basically, for um, five for each wheel. And then right, right here, did they send me any stickers or anything? Oh, no, it's just a package. So, uh, I got the should be the wheel spacers for the front. So I ended up going with the uh, what did I say? I went with I think I went with a half inch uh, wheel spacer. And I did not get the ones with the studs. I couldn't really find a half inch one that had the studs already in it. That's why I went with the extended wheel studs over there um, so that I could fit these on there and still have enough uh, engagement, um, threads of engagement for the lugs. So we'll just kind of slide that on real quick and see how that's going to look. It's kind of a that's a really tight fit, which is good. I mean, you want a tight fit, so um, that's going to give us the clearance we need to clear that sway bar. Um, and like I said, I was hitting this, but I think that's because my suspension wasn't compressed. Um, I can't, because the car's on jacks, I, I sold my wheels really quick. wasn't expecting that before I got the new ones. So I couldn't lower the car to... Um, fully compress the suspension to test you know test the wheel out properly so 
hoping this all works out good, um, but we're gonna work on this today. I'm gonna get those wheel studs on. Um, so I'm gonna start by, I'm gonna take the caliper off, take the rotor off, hammer out the old studs, put the new ones in, put the spacer on, and then test fit the wheel and see, make sure it clears the sway bar and everything. And I'll kind of just film that today. So I wanted to mention something real quick um, about the wheel studs. So you really only have two choices. You can do the ARP, which is the, I guess the better quote, better option, um, which they're like 110, 120 bucks. Um, I think for just five of them or some, something like that. Um, which these here, I think we're only like 16 bucks for five of them. Um, and Moroso is a good brand. Um, I, you know, never heard anything bad about them. So I went with these. Um, it's not that I'm cheap. It's just that, um, I try to get quality stuff that's not overpriced. Same with these lug nuts. I mean, I could have got the, I think Gorilla ones and it would have been like, uh, a hundred and something dollar i don't know it's like 120 or 140 dollars um but ford performance makes good parts and these were um granted they're not colored and they're not black or cool looking but they're just you know standard but these were i think i want to i want to say these were like 40 or 50 bucks for all 20 of them so um just wanted to mention that and then the same with the spacers um american muscle has some spacers on their website um, there's like name brand ones, um, but I found these on CJ Pony Parts. Um, good quality. They fit tight for, uh, I think they were 50 bucks um, for the pair. So I uh, just wanted to mention that stuff. You guys, you don't always have to pay premium prices for stuff. Um, you can get stuff like this that's going to do the job just fine. Um, that's not completely overpriced. You know, all this stuff sitting here, I think was like, I want to say it was like, uh, 98 bucks um which if i would have paid the premium stuff i probably would have been in the 300 hundred dollar range so just want to mention that real quick all right so back to business here i got the uh i got the brake caliper off um a lot of guys say hey get a string or zip ties and zip tie it off somewhere um if you've got a a, a mustang you can just set it up in this little this little nook here um you don't have to worry about trying to figure out where to tie it off on the caliper or on the the mustang or whatever whatever um so that's what i usually do is i just set it up there um but uh after you get the caliper off which is just this little pin here you remove that little uh lock washer thing uh tap that pin out which is pretty easy to come out and then you got this bracket left which is these two 15 millimeter bolts that they bolt right here right there and there those are a bitch um so what i do is uh i turn the steering wheel all the way to the right so the caliper is kind of out facing this way. That gives me a better angle. And I just do a breaker bar and I stand on it because um, those are pretty pretty tough. But now uh, I'm just going to rotate the, the wheel um, to where I can just hammer these uh, studs out. And I'm just going to go one by one until I get them all out. And then I'm going to get the new ones in. All right, so you can hear I'm a little bit out of breath. I just got done pounding all these out. Um, all the... Uh, stock studs out with that BFH there and I pounded all these out too um, just kind of working on both sides at the same time just to kind of keep the process moving a little bit quicker and um, that way I don't have to have a whole bunch of tools out all at once I could just kind of use a tool that I need and then put it back etc so I'm gonna get these other studs out and get these in and I'm going to use the uh, method to press them in where you just get an old lug nut and just tighten it until um, until it's on, basically. So we'll see how that goes. All right, yeah, so here's the side-by-side -side of uh, the new stud versus the old stud. Um, so you can see the size difference. It's an inch bigger, um, the, the new stud is. So um, I have started on this side. I'll just kind of show you how I'm doing this, and you may disagree with how I'm doing it, um, and that's okay. So I got the stud through uh, using anti-seize, put anti-seize on the thread of the stud that goes through through this hole, like uh, the stud hole here. Um, I used some washers to kind of push out so that uh, my deep well would work, you know, a little bit better. 
And then I just got one of the lug nuts. Um, so I'm just sacrificing one of the lug nuts um, to, uh, I don't know, I guess I wouldn't say sacrificing. It, was, I'm, it might still be usable after this, we'll see. Uh, but to basically tighten the stud so that it uh, presses in. Um, and I'm using a torque wrench to do this. Um, using plenty of anti-seize though on, on the whole threads, the whole thread just to make sure nothing gets seized up or messed up. All right guys, so uh, we got the extended studs all on and as you can see, everything's silver. Uh, crap ton of anti-seize. <laughs> um, it just got to be a mess, but uh, both sides are on. So what I ended up doing was I found this old nut um, that was big enough to where the threads weren't going to get on the studs like it could go around the threads almost so it basically acted as a washer the washers weren't working um, but anyways I put this on and then I used I went through four lug nuts uh, just because they um, were starting to get kind of beat up and hard to screw on and once it started getting tough to screw on I'd back it off and then get it get a new one but uh, did that put the lug nut on and then used a uh, impact to basically just pull the uh pull the studs through and and get them on there so um i know it's probably not the ideal way but it's the way i used and it worked so um i'm gonna have to buy another pack of studs or of uh lug nuts because <clears throat> now i'm down to three packs but i still have my old ones that'll work on the back um i only needed the open end for the front really but i bought you know 20 of them just so everything would match um but anyways um gonna get the brakes back on and then get the spacer test fitted and get the wheel on and with the spacer and see how everything goes all right guys so we still had the issue where it's hitting the bumper here uh, but in the last one of the other clips in this video um i mentioned it's because the car there's no load once the car's sitting on the ground that will be up higher and we won't have an issue with that rubbing the main thing i was wanted to check out here was the uh the sway bar and uh we got we're at full lock right now so we got just enough space there so my guess is that it's probably gonna rub just a little bit so this is a, a half inch spacer i i believe uh, so it's a three three quarter inch spacer. I'm sorry. Um, so three quarter inch spacer gives just enough space to clear the sway bar as it sits in its current state. Once I get a load on the car and get it set down, um, the clearances might change. I mean, it might get a little bit bigger, but it's definitely not going to be hitting that bumper anymore. All right, guys. So I got the uh, all the wheels on, the tires on. There it is. All right, guys, here it is. All the wheels are on, torqued down. Um, I'm not too, too excited about the way the front looks. Um, you can see how much it sticks out, how much further it sticks out than the rear, um, unfortunately, because I think I should have got a different offset for the front, and that would have made it, the back spacing a little different. Um, and then I wouldn't have had to get such a big spacer and then it would have sat a little more in um, And still cleared the sway bar and not stuck out as much um, But I'll kind of show you the back because that's where you can really see it. So you can look at the back looking up um, And I definitely got to get an alignment done because um, you can see how how much toe is is on the front right there um, and that's actually what's in here my caster camera plates from maximum motorsports but I just wanted to kind of show you guys this um, it's pretty wet and nasty out today but I think either tomorrow or the next day I'm going to take it out for a drive make sure everything clears but um, as of you know just kind of turning the wheel and stuff we're all good the back actually has more clearance than the other rims I had as far as what the exhaust goes. You see that, so I really don't need the spacer on the back anymore, but I'm probably just gonna leave it so that the front doesn't look so stupid. But I'm thinking I'm gonna need to get some flares 
some fender flares just so that it's not as bad right there and it's not flinging rocks all over the car but um, suspension still needs to settle too so we'll wait for that to happen and then see how how it looks but there it is that was my journey of getting these put on all right guys so i wanted to address something real quick <clears throat> the ford performance lug nuts that i uh, showed earlier in the video actually did not fit um, they were too big in here and i couldn't get a socket around them so i had to buy these i got these gorilla ones off of uh, amazon and i'll link those in in the description uh, but they come with a really thin wall socket and they're really you know they're a lot smaller diameter um, so I was able to get those on and get a socket in there to tighten them. Um, so just wanted to address that. The Ford Performance ones, they were nice, but they ended up not working out. These are a lot lighter too. Um, the whole pack of 20 actually weighed less than the pack of five Ford Performance ones. So I wanted to get that addressed um, just so that you don't buy those Ford Performance ones if you get these, these wheels because uh, they won't fit. Sitting down after a bunch of hard work. All right guys, so some issues here. Um, after getting it on the ground, and testing the steering and the clearance, it rubs right here at full lock to the left. It actually clears the sway bar by quite a bit. So I don't know, I guess because the house or the um, car was jacked up, it was hitting the sway bar during that test fitting. But when it's on the ground, there's like two inches of clearance to the sway bar. Um, and so this is a great video for everybody watching who hasn't done anything yet because I'm about to save you a ton of time and money. It rubs the front fender at full lock uh, to the left over here and then rubs the back fender at full lock um, to the right, which is odd because the driver's side does not rub at full lock to the right on the front at all. Um, so, I don't know, I'll take a look at that. Uh, and I, like I said before, I do need to get those caster camber plates installed and uh, get an alignment done, and that'll probably help with uh, some clearance too. But um, I think I'm going to try to take those spacers off, put the wheels back on, and then see what kind of clearance I have, see if it helps with the clearing the fender right there and on the other side. If not, for a temporary fix, I'm just gonna take this uh, part of the side skirt off so that I could drive it around until I figure out what I'm gonna do next. But um, I feel a little bit stupid, I guess, because I wasted, I may have, well, we'll find out here in a minute, may have wasted a bunch of money on extended studs and a spacer and doing the whole front end to get this to fit when really all it needed to do was get set down and it would clear. But like I said, I didn't have all of the rims. I didn't have any wheels on the car. Hey. But like I was saying, I didn't have any wheels on the car to set it down to see how it fit. And that was, I think, one of my biggest mistakes and downfalls in this whole situation. So I'm gonna take the wheels off, take the spacer off, put the wheels back on, see what kind of uh, clearance we got. All right guys, we'll all be dang. It clears this, but it does hit the fender liner on the inside there at full lock to the left. Underneath, let me get a better angle here. this now but it does rub the fender liner a little bit I'll kind of move the steering wheel some more here so you can see how close it is so it's a little close I mean there's some room still and I'll go full lock to the right
again, this is with taking the three quarter inch spacers off. I'm thinking maybe just a five millimeter spacer ought to do it, so. All right guys, so long story short, I think uh, the extended studs and the three quarter inch spacer was all just a waste of time, unfortunately. Um, I, I got lucky that I sold my wheels so quick, but I got unlucky that I didn't have any wheels to get the car under load to properly fit the, uh, the wheel and tire. Um, so, hey, no, no. Um, so now that the, you know, all four wheels are on here, I was able to see that, uh, it's just barely rubbing the sway bar. And I mean, I may just leave it cause I was rubbing the sway bar before, but we'll see. Um, but it literally probably just needs like a five millimeter spacer to get off the sway bar. Um, and then, like I said before, at full lock, it is rubber, rubbing some fender linings, um, but not the fenders or bumper or side skirts. So with the spacers on, it was actually rubbing more than with spacers off in terms of uh, body panels and stuff. So that's where we're sitting here. Um, we've got uh, 18 by 10.5 inch RPF1 wheels with a 15 inch plus 15 inch off or plus 15 millimeter offset um, and then 315 30 18 tires and it fits um, just rubs the sway bar a little bit if you want to not rub anything um, five millimeter spacer up front should do it but it is going to rub the fender linings and we will see how bad Come the next autocross. I'm actually going to drive this to a Cars and Coffee on Saturday, so I may mess around on some back roads or something with it. Um, I did just take it down the street in the neighborhood just to see if I could hear anything, and I didn't really hear much, so it, it, I don't think it's bad. Um, but I'm not sure if I want to post the entire video of me working on everything because I just I'm, I'm kind of in shock right now of my stupidity and. Uh, all that wasted time with those studs and the spacers and the wasted money as well but uh i may post it all just so that everyone else can benefit from my stupidity and uh and ignorance so hopefully you enjoyed this um i'll post an update video soon on uh how much stuff's rubbing but as of right now uh just the sway bar a little bit at full lock and the fender linings a little bit at full lock Rear, rear fender linings, uh, not the front. So, there we go.